mild spoilers ahead. You have been warned. We are going to be talking about my hands-on impressions with Marvel Spider-Man 2 today, and a part of the time that we got to get playing the game included some stuff for the story, and they put us a couple of hours in. So if you don't want to know anything, if you don't want to hear anything regarding spoilers, this may not be the video for you. But if you're hyped to learn about a potential Spider-Verse side mission, if you're excited to learn about how incredible the characterization of characters like Lizard and Craven are in this game. Well, here we go. We're going to get into it with my hands on impressions on Marvel Spider Man 2. Let me just mention a huge thanks to the folks at PlayStation Canada for inviting me out, for flying me out to Los Angeles and allowing me time to get my hands on with the game. I got to play it for quite a couple of hours. I pretty much got to see the entire open world. At least I got to explore and free roam what was new, and that was amazing. And I also got to check out a ton of new story related things. Let me just jump in right away and talk about the thing that I imagine a lot of people want to know about and that's specifically the traversal. There was so much discourse regarding whether or not Peter has new web swing animations within Marvel Spider-Man 2 and that point was already proven wrong by the trailer that they released yesterday but let me just reiterate from what I played yes Peter has new web swinging animations. And they are sweet. The air tricks felt fairly similar to what Miles is actually able to do that we recognize from Spider-Man Miles Morales. And a lot of those animations and air tricks are back in Marvel Spider-Man 2. But when you're just doing your normal web swinging, Peter does some crazy flips. He does some cool poses and it's a lot of fun. Speaking of traversal, I don't want to talk in hyperbole here, okay? But I genuinely mean it. In the limited amount of time that I had with Marvel, Spider-Man 2, I think right now that the web wings might be my all-time favorite traversal mechanic in any video game ever. Think about all the stuff you love about the Batman Arkham Glide, okay? You know, dive bombing towards the street and then just pulling up at the last possible second, you're pretty much skidding right above the ground. And now imagine all that fun stuff but you're also Spider-Man. I don't know. I don't know how Insomniac did it. These guys are freaking wizards, man. But I was having an absolute blast with the web wings. Those wind tunnels are placed in the perfect spots around the open world. Not to mention there are vents on top of rooftops that will launch you back up into the air. So then you can get a little bit more momentum with the web wings. It's just an unbelievable amount of fun. And it's a simple button press too. You're web swinging around, doing some air tricks, press triangle, boom, the web wings wings are out and then you can do all your fun stuff and go right back into a web swing or into some air tricks if you'd like There's mid air dodges that you can do and also if you hold down and then circle he's gonna pull out the web wings and then stop himself so if you see a random crime or maybe a collectible well you can stop yourself in mid air to then go collect or fight the crime and i don't even think i need to talk about this too much but man this game looks pretty my goodness they are taking advantage of the playstation 5 that much is for sure there's just something about about it when you look at the gameplay from Marvel Spider-Man 2 and then compare it with the gameplay in Spider-Man Miles Morales even on the PS5 or Marvel Spider-Man Remastered there's just that added layer of sharpness and saturation that's in Marvel Spider-Man 2 that just makes it look that much better not to mention the character models the textures the lighting and I think particularly the nighttime setting in Marvel Spider-Man 2 looks leagues better than the way it looked in the previous two games rest assured they are taking advantage of every little bit of the power that the PlayStation 5 offers with this game. You already know all the upgrades that combat's gotten in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and it's a lot of fun when you got your hands on the controller, stringing together your regular attacks that you recognize and you remember from the last two games, but then also mixing in those brand new special attacks that you have tied to the L1 button. It's so much fun. And what I found most interesting about that is that those special attacks aren't just going to be symbiote attacks at one point in the game. You can choose if you want some symbiote attacks, and then as well, some attacks with those iron arms. You can choose as well if you want to switch out all the face buttons to be attached to just iron arm special attacks or just symbiote attacks of course with miles it's a little bit different because he has the venom abilities but there's a lot to explore there and i'm very much looking forward to getting my hands on the full game to see what sort of different things you can combine what things are best to mix and match the iron arms are a lot of fun and they're pretty powerful and they're not too in 
intrusive in the gameplay. The symbiote attacks, I mean, you already know, that's the power fantasy that we're looking for out of Marvel Spider-Man 2, being able to take control of that symbiote and utilize it to its fullest potential. And I think that best describes exactly what Insomniac did in this game. They pretty much nailed what it would feel like to use that power. It's brutal, man. It is very visceral. Some of those attacks are going to sit there and be like, my God, what did I just do to that poor dude? So suffice to say, the symbiote suit in Marvel Spider-Man 2 is pretty much perfect. Another interesting thing worth noting about the symbiote suit, or I guess the alternate suits in general within Marvel Spider-Man 2, is that your symbiote abilities aren't specifically tied to the symbiote suit. Essentially, the symbiote suit in Marvel Spider-Man 2 is just an alternate costume. If you want, you can use the advanced suit 2.0 and still use the symbiote abilities. You can, of course, use the Raimi suit from Spider-Man 3 and use the symbiote abilities. Side note, I got to use the Raimi suit from Spider-Man 3 of the symbiote abilities. That was awesome. And I just, in general, think that that's a really good way to do it. That way, you know, hey, if I really like the advanced suit, I don't want to lose that because it's tied to the story that way i can still just use the advanced suit for as long as i'd like and i still get all those super fun symbiote abilities or maybe you know i like the symbiote suit in spider-man 2 but i'm not the biggest fan of the symbiote abilities and i'd rather use what you can do with the iron arms that's an option that's available as well they thought of everything oh and one of the really cool things that you get to do with the symbiote suit in this game is that you get to have basically like a rage meter similar to the god of war games you fill up this meter click in the thumbsticks and then the symbiote suit transforms. And then the logo on the now transformed symbiote suit actually looks fairly similar to the Venom logo. And then when you're in this mode, it's like two attacks against an enemy, and then you do a crazy takedown with the symbiote, and you pretty much just go berserk. Again, think the rage mode from the God of War games, but now implemented into Marvel Spider-Man 2. It's perfect. And what's really cool about it as well is that if you're just using the Advanced Suit 2.0 and then you activate the rage, it almost feels like, you know, you're transforming into the black suit on the fly. The alternate suits are pretty damn great in this game, and you already saw in the trailer yesterday that there are plenty of suits from the previous two games that are returning here but the additive now is that there are color variants for the suits in this game and that opens up pandora's box for customization i noticed that one of the color variants for the advanced suit 2.0 makes it so that the blue on the suit is actually black so it's like a black and red advanced suit and i know a lot of people are going to be very happy when they see that but then also there's some funkier colors in there and there's some suits that maybe i wasn't the biggest fan of but that color variant makes it pop that much more and of course all the other bells and whistles you're already aware of you know there are three skills trees in the game one for peter one for miles and then the shared skill tree for both of the spider-men and there's also a ton of ways that you can upgrade both of the characters their gadgets and so on the open world is a massive in this game and there's an unimaginable amount to explore considering as well the fact that it is almost double in size from the last two games you're not even going to believe how much there is to see the random crimes that i was encountering around the open world were pretty much the same from the last two games there were some minor tweaks to them the car chases were a bit different but some of them were just, you know, your standard mugging or breaking and entering, just beat up a bunch of thugs. What's really cool about this though, is that sometimes you'll go into a random crime that's happening and Miles or Peter, whatever it might be, depending on which character you're playing as, will be there as well and fighting the criminals alongside you. Sometimes it can get a bit messy. There's quite a few things happening on screen at once, but when you're just attacking a guy and then it goes into a dual takedown where Peter and Miles work together, it's just unbelievably satisfying. And what caught me by surprise was a side mission where you're collecting a whole bunch of spider bots and actually at the event they had some of these spider bots you know one of them will be like a shocker spider bot or one of them will be like a spider-man 2099 suit spider bot and what i was starting to learn is this might actually be a side quest that makes spider-verse canon within the marvel spider-man games the animation of the effect that pulsates from one of the spider bots when you find them in the open world is very similar in the art style that we see from the spider-verse movies there are some spider bots that are spider-verse character specific you know there's a penny parker spider bot or there's a spider gwen spider bot or even the spider-man noir spider bot actually has the fedora you know like how he looks in those movies but beyond that beyond the spider-verse if you will i had a conversation with genki after i collected enough of them 
where Genki said, hey, I'm trying to ping who's placing these spider bots around the city. And it's saying to me here that that person is millions of miles away. Peter's like, oh, there's no way that this person is in deep space leaving these spider bots around the city. So maybe they're just messing with your signal, try and figure out who it is. And then it clicked with me. That art style that's pulsating from the spider bots when you see them around the city. The fact that it's from someone a million miles away Maybe it's from somebody from another dimension. Maybe it's from somebody through that Spider-Verse, if you will. I wasn't able to collect them all, so I don't know the resolve of this side mission, but I think it's awesome that that might end up happening. And when I played the last two Spider-Man games, I had one major nitpick. And I think, honestly, this was a nitpick that a lot of people had. And I feel Insomniac took that feedback in stride. And that was the boss battles. The last two games kind of had the boss battle structured where you're just dodging a whole bunch and then you find an opening to attack the enemy. In Marvel Spider-Man 2, I had the chance to face off against the lizard and my goodness, it was one of the most engaging, enthralling, and crazy set pieces for a boss battle that I've seen in a long time from a game. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's the newly introduced parry mechanic within Marvel Spider-Man 2, but also the boss had a health bar thank you finally i can keep track as to how far into the fight i am how close i am to beating the enemy that's something i feel was sorely missing from the first two games and i wanted to save talking about the story until the very end of this video because again minor spoilers for anybody if you don't want to know about anything regarding the story in marvel spider-man 2 now is your last chance okay you guys still here all right the first cutscene that we got to witness when we got our hands on with this game was a cutscene between Peter and his symbiote suit confronting Kraven. And I am telling you right now, this is one of the best Spider-Man scenes ever. Spider-Man has a deep rogues gallery, all right? Let's not mess around here. We know that there are a lot of really cool villains that Spider-Man has faced off against. Kraven, though, he's one of the tippy top. And his motive has always been fairly simple. He's just a guy who wants the hunt. He wants the greatest challenge. And this confrontation that he has with Peter, it's, oh my God, I, I cannot praise it enough. From a performance standpoint, animation, direction, writing, all of it, it's firing on all cylinders. If Kraven has been your boy, if that's your favorite Spider-Man villain, this game is going to blow your freaking mind. this later. From that confrontation with Craven, then you go into a cutscene with Peter and Harry, and you find out, well, at this point in the story, Harry knows that Peter is Spider-Man. Harry knows that Peter has the symbiote. And it makes me really wonder how we got to this point. Because once again, our time, our hands-on with Marvel Spider-Man 2, they actually threw us a couple of hours into the game. So I still don't even know how Peter obtains the symbiote suit, and as well, what those interactions look like between Peter and Harry leading up to this point in the game. But it is confirmed that, well, without that symbiote, Harry is dying and unfortunately Kirk Connors was the guy who was treating him and now he's the lizard you head over to Kirk Connors house you actually find out through some security cam footage that lizard did have the lab coat okay he, he was wearing it it just rips off because he gets so big you guys called it on that one all right I apologize I'm just nitpicking I get it all right you hated me for that I'm sorry and then from there we pretty much got to play the PlayStation showcase demo that you saw except it was pretty extended and there were quite a few scenes that weren't in the actual PlayStation showcase demo it's pretty much similar to what insomniac has done in the past with the marketing for their games just think back what they did with that e3 demo with the sinister six it wasn't that different there was just a couple of extended moments and some more to the gameplay bits of it i feel like they just condensed it for the sake of it being marketing material but it was just so much fun you know going into the sewers fighting the lizard having that boss battle take place and then blasting out of the sewers and chasing him through the streets of new york city all the meanwhile peter is starting to succumb to the effects of the symbiote and is just getting angrier it's just so cool i'm telling you marvel spider-man 2 has game of the year material written all over it it has best superhero game of all time material written all over it if they stick the landing when this full game comes out next month on october 20th it may honestly be the best superhero game ever made i know usually when we talk about things like this i try to tell you guys hey keep your expectations in check you know don't get too overly hyped you don't want to set massive expectations but no i went to this event with very very astronomically high expectations 
and I'm serious, Marvel Spider-Man 2 exceeded them tenfold. I was already itching to get my hands on the full game on October 20th, but now I'm seriously foaming at the mouth to get my hands on it next month. There's still so much to talk about. I really feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of my time with the game. There's so much that I want to tell you guys about. So we're going to continue the conversation. Lots of more videos to come. But until then, now let me kick it to you guys. Sound off with your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to Marvel Spider-Man 2 even more than you already were after everything that I went over in this video? Sound off with your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. I've been Caboose, and I'll see you guys later.